So this is how the thing would be if you are using MapReduce. First, the data is in a structured format in a database. So you would need scoop to take a DB dump in a CSV format and put it into HDFS. Right, that's what we're doing over here. Then from HDFS, you will have a map task which will read the comma separated value file. In the business logic of the map task, you will de-identify columns based on configuration. Then you will have a reduce task which will push the data back into HDFS. So please remember like what we saw yesterday, input and output of a map reduce job is always in HDFS. So when you write a code, it will consist of a map and a reduce. Of course, we will have a look at the flow of it also. So don't worry, I'll explain everything for you folks. So this is how you would solve that particular problem. So now, if you're trying to use a traditional way, okay, not the map reduce way, you're not using Hadoop. So you have got huge amount of data. As a developer, what you will have to do, you, you know that the crux of this thing is parallel processing. If your centralized processing has its own limitations where everything is happening at one location, so you would need to process it parallelly. So that's the reason why you would have the data split into multiple small chunks. Okay, so as a developer, you will have to do the splitting, whereas in your Hadoop world, the framework does the splitting into 64 MB block automatically. We don't have to write a code for that, but then if you were writing this in the old way without MapReduce, you have to do the split. Then you had to do a grep and then you had to match that grep is looking through the data and then matching whatever is the logic that you want to write. Okay, you have to ensure that the, the code is there on each place wherever you have split the data. Here again, the MapReduce framework does all of these things magically. So the code automatically goes down to the node wherever the data is. Okay, after that, you have to bring together in the old environment, in the traditional way, all the matches together. You have to bring it together into one place and then you'll have to accumulate it. And again, this is the third thing what the framework does. It brings the data from all the different places where it was done individually and give it to you in a consolidated format in HDFS. So what does the framework uh, give to you? The ability to split the data automatically, the ability to run the code on the block split wherever the data is split. That is what is called as moving code to data, aggregating the data from the multiple places and giving you it in a consolidated format. If you try to do it on your own, you have to do everything. Okay? Shishobit was saying, what is grep? Grep is a Linux command, okay, which will go through the document to analyze something, like a where clause in a SQL query. Cat is for displaying the contents or printing out the contents together. So these are two of the most commonly used Linux commands. So go down to Google. If you go down to grep and see, GREP, just press enter, you would see, there it is. <clears throat> so look at the solution in the, in the Wikipedia, it is loading up. So grep is a command line utility for searching plain text data for matching a regular expression. Okay, <clears throat> so grep was developed for Unix operating system but is available for all Unix-like systems. Okay, and if you talk about cat, all cats will come. That's the reason why I'm searching for Unix cat. Okay, there we go. So if you look at cat, cat is, uh, uh, let it come up. Yeah, there we go. So cat is a standard Unix utility which will output the contents of a specific file and can be used to concatenate and list files. Okay, so cat is an abbreviation of catenate or concatenate, that means add, right? So these are all two Unix commands that we have, friends. So clear on that, Shishobit? So this is what you had to do it in a traditional way. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so now, there we go. This is what is the map reduce magic. So I'm going to spend about the next 15 minutes on this particular section. We have to be crystal clear uh, when we come out of this, okay? So now, imagine I have got a file that is going to be, let me open up my notepad. 
and let me talk about the use case so that this becomes very clear for you. So let me put this up. Okay, so what am I having? I'm having 100 MB file 1 stored in the cluster in blocks of 64 and 36 MB each. Fine? This is what are the example that you already have. Okay? So, now, <clears throat> what am I showing over here in the input column? There are six columns that we are having. The input column is going to be the one block that I'm talking about. It could be 64. If it is 200 MB, there will be multiple 64s and uh, uh, the balance, whatever, 64 into 2 is 128. So 3 64s and uh, the balance of it, right? Okay. So whatever might be the contents of a block, I am talking about one block over here. Fine, that's what I'm talking. The same thing would happen on all the blocks parallelly because where are the blocks stored? Blocks are stored on multiple nodes, right? I hope that is clear for you. In a real environment, blocks will be stored on multiple nodes. So the input over here is one block. Are we clear on this, guys? Uh, Swapnil, you are saying multiple data nodes. Yes, the blocks are stored on multiple data nodes, right? If you are having 64 and 36, wouldn't the blocks be stored on multiple data nodes? Right, friends? Good. So, that is what is, I am talking about one block right now. <clears throat> okay, then, uh, remember I told you something about input split uh, in our uh, diagram? When we were doing the job tracker 12 steps flow, I said there is something called as input split, right? So if this is the way how the data is going to be, we will have to decide how the splitting logic would be done. Am I talking about block split? No, I am talking about record split over here. So we will have to tell the program, okay, how to look out for one record in that 64 MB. And what is the default splitting logic? New line. So whenever you see a new line, it is considered as a uh, new record. Okay? Exactly. Actual data split is equal to record split in one block. Okay, Swapnil? I'm talking about one block. Remember, I have got 64 and 36, two blocks separately. Inside one block, I will have, you will have to identify a record. So if I'm having three lines over here, hypothetically, it could be three lines, it could be 30,000 lines, it could be 3 million lines, okay? Uh, depending upon whatever is the size of that 64 MB block, okay? So you will decide how to do the splitting. So the, there's a Java code which will be done. Exactly. The same splitting logic will be done for the 64 MB and 36 MB because they are one file, right? So you can't have a different splitting logic for one block and another splitting logic for another block of the same file. I hope that is clear for everybody. Please chip in in case if something is not clear. Okay? Fantastic. So this is how the splitting would be done. So what does the splitting do here is, let me tell you, when you do the splitting, okay, it converts a record into a key and a value. And that is what is going to be the input to the mapper. Please remember, the input and the output of the mapper is always going to be a key value if you have read the definitive guide. Prapul is saying, give me an example of splitting. You can see over here, friend, this is an example of splitting. Am I not having three lines over here? Okay, so how is it splitted? It is splitted into three separate records. I'll explain what are the key value, but then understand just this logic, friend. Okay, so what is going to be the key over here is the offset point. That means the position in the file is what is going to be the key. So is dear the first line? Yeah, so the offset point or the position in the file will be zero for the first record. And what will be the value? The whole record will be the value. Okay, let me explain that. Okay, the key in the 
splitting would be the position of the cursor okay <clears throat> will be the count position of the cursor okay <clears throat> and the value would be one record okay so let me put this in the chat window for all of you so that this becomes very 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 clear i'll explain multiple types of splitting also don't worry okay so now if zero and dear beer river is for the first one what do you think will be the key for the second record remember it is not zero one two three i'm not talking about the number of lines i'm talking about the position in the file so what will it do it will do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen there are fifteen positions when it comes down to the next line it will be sixteen so for the second record the key would be sixteen then seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty including spaces 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And the third record will start with the key as 30. And dear car beer. This is the way how splitting would happen parallelly at every record. <clears throat> hey, you only decide what is the splitting. Okay, and the split the, the framework will ensure that it will give it a key and a value. You don't have to do any key and value. You just say how to split it, okay? So how to split it is based on a Java class, okay? I'll be showing. Hey, guys, uh, you would also need, okay, uh, next time when I show you the API, uh, the uh, Hadoop uh, documentation, okay? Because I want to show you the documentation. So on Monday, I would need the Hadoop documentation. Let me show you from where to get it. So just go down to Google and say Hadoop download. Okay. <clears throat> and it will take you to Hadoop releases. When I click on Hadoop download, it will take you to Hadoop releases. Click on Hadoop release. And I will click on this. It will take you to a list of places where you can have downloads. So click on the download. And what are the major downloads you are having? 1.2x, 2x, and 0.23x. 0.2x, in fact. Okay? So click on download a release now. When you click on download a release now, you will see that it will take you to something very funny in my machine. I have to press enter once again for it to connect. It will work. That is, I need to look at. It only happens with my, uh, this thing, what I call, internet. If I go down to a client place, it works fine. So, very funny. So, when you click on this link, let me copy this link and give it to everybody. It will take you to a link. Okay, Swapnil says, for same problem for me too. Okay, so I'm not the only one. Okay, that's good. Cool. So now let me continue. Okay, that's fine. That's good. So now uh, if you look at uh, the link, there would be I the uh, Apache would suggest a link for you depending upon your geographic location. Look at your Hadoop uh, 1.2.1. Okay. So when you click on this 1.2.1, any any release of Gen 1, and then you will have to download a file that is called as tar.gz. Okay, it's a 61 MB file. Please have it downloaded, and please have it unzipped. Using a RAR, you can unzip the tar.gz file. Okay, friends? So the link what I had given it to you, click on that particular link so that it will take you to the location which is geographically closer to you. So see, this is how, like Hadoop, remember I told you the name node will decide which is closest to you. So when you click on it, I'm sure very few people will have got uh, motorology.com because I'm in Mumbai, so that's the reason why it has given me motorology.com. When you click on this common link, okay, just one sec, uh, this is closer.cgi.hadoop.com 
okay when I click on this link it will give you we suggest the following mirror for your download would be based on your geographic location for the guys in US this is I bet on it you would not have got this you would have got something else <clears throat> okay so this is how the network proximity is done even by Apache guys right friends so once have your tar.gz downloaded extracted and you would see it right very good so just one second friends hey hold on guys just one sec <coughs> uh, too many things at the same time guys yep yep there we go so no 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 I'm using a broadband uh, Okay, Shushobit said not for me. For him, it has gone to Trivian.com. Is what Srikan said. Everybody would be given a different link. Don't worry. Okay, so Shushobit, uh, are you also getting the same link? Uh, Motorology.com. Where are you based out of Shushobit? What's your location? No, I'm not using Airtel. You are in Bangalore. Okay, so maybe for the region, whole of the APJ reg uh, Indian region, they're giving you the same link. Okay, for others, like what Srikant mentioned, he got another link. Cool. So, no, I'm, I'm using a fiber line, uh, uh, Swapnal. I'm using MTNL. Fine, folks. So, let me minimize this. So, now I hope... Uh, we will specify what is the splitting logic and the framework will convert it into a key and a value pair. The key will always be the position in the file at the offset point and the value will be the whole record. Are we clear with the first two columns? So we need to be clear guys. Right friends? Any questions in the first two columns? The, the way how the splitting is going to be happening is on all the blocks wherever it is running. Good, Shishobeth. I would really appreciate if others also. K1 is always a cursor position. That's correct. Hey, uh, Ravi said splitting logic is based on space and new line. No, it is only going to be based on the new line. Slash N. That is important, Ravi S. Good, Abnikant. Fine, you're welcome. So now, uh, the, uh, whatever is the key value, yeah, irrespective of the data input, that's right, Swapnal. Propel, this is not for a word count. This is for any, any data set. Let me go ahead and show it to you. Let me go down to another example and show you a data set. Give me one sec. Let me go down to my JPMC. And let me go down to the data. This is one data set that you will be seeing that is called as TXNS which has got 1 million records. So let me go down to that and open that in an editor. I think I had shown it to you earlier. I don't recollect but then this is going to be 1 million records. Okay. So see over here. You would actually see 1 million records over here. So even for this 1 million records also, look at the uh, 9,99,999 998 line. This is what is one record. Okay? Good, Abni. So I've shown this to you earlier. So that's right. So this is going to be one record. So in most 95% of your structured data examples, you would see this as one record, friends. Okay, a new line is always a record proper. Make sense, friend? Let me minimize that. <clears throat> okay, cool. So now that is what is going to be go inside the mapper, K1, V1. That is key and value. In the mapper, you will write your business logic. What is the business logic in this example is you want to split that whole record into different words and count the number of words, right? That is what is going to be the business logic in this particular example, right friends? So what do I do? I write my business logic of breaking up the record into multiple words and I will suffix one to it. Why one to it? Because I'm doing a word count. 
okay in your transaction example in your mapper what will you do supposing if i want to find out the sum of sales in texas okay i will in the mapper what will be the key and value key will be an offset point and value will be the whole record so from the record you will pick up two things what are the two things you will pick up you will pick up the state and you will pick up the amount and if it is texas then only you will uh, let the value come out of the mapper because you are interested only in texas right so that is what is the logic what you will be doing it in the mapping phase cool so sapnil was asking so k1 v1 will always be an integer number always 99.999999 <laughs> count it for another 100 times it will always be a long data type it will be long because it won't be an integer okay so uh, uh, sign navdeep was asking me in java okay uh, we are going to write the coding in java right so what do we do in the mapping you write your business logic of what you want to do what are we trying to do we are doing a word count over here right so i want to find out the number of unique words that we have and the count of the words that is what my use case is about so once i get a record what should i do with the record sapnal i should break the record and suffix one to it right so the output of a mapper is also key and value so that's the reason why you will write the logic to break the record and the output would be a key that is every record and to it it will always be one because we are want to just have the count of it in the example of your data set of your transaction what is my use case sum of sales in texas okay so from one record what am i interested i'm interested in the state and the amount and when will i uh, push out the i mean what will come out of the mapper only if it is texas right so i will write my business logic of what you want to retrieve from the record in the mapper so the mapper will always that's why it's called as a map the map will always look at what do you want to get from the record so in this case the map will get the key value pair from the record okay so what will be the output of the mapper it could be one key value pair or it could be a list of keys and values list means more than one key value in this example of word count you have got one more than one key value right so in in another example of the transaction example there was only one key and one value make sense friends okay <clears throat> very much swapnal because you, you don't you do a where clause select star from table name where so when you do a where doesn't that where apply to every record in your uh, database very much okay so let me show you another data set so if you look at a transaction a, 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 a maximum temperature data set okay so what do you see over here is i have got six records <clears throat> okay and deliberately i'm going to do a word wrap so you can see this is how the data would be for those six records okay so what is needed over here is uh, one record is a reading of a temperature uh, uh, for a particular year and the temp the year is going to be over here okay and the temperature is going to be over here so they are fixed positions right so if i want to find out the max temperature per year i will have to find out the temperature and the year so what will be the key key would be the year and what will be the value value will be the temperature whatever you want to do to do the aggregation on fine so that is the way how you will have to start looking at it everything is going to be a key value pair and we will have to understand that very clearly <clears throat> cool so that is what is the output of the mapper a key and a value so now the first three steps are going to be done on every node wherever the data is going to be okay hope that is very clear with you it is going to be done on every node wherever the data is going to be then what do you do whenever the mapper finishes okay where is the output stored guys 
Shishabit was asking, what is K2? K2 is what is the output of the map. So you have to identify from a record what is a key and a value, right? So identify what is a key and a value. So what is a key that is going to be there from the record that you want? So, so in the example of the word count, it will be the word. In the example of the transaction data set, it will be the state. In the example of the max temperature for a year, the key will be the year. Okay? Good, good. <clears throat> so, proper two seconds, I'll explain that. So, uh, Swapnil was saying, what I understood is that we have to go through the record manually at start. You'll have to pass on the data set to the record and the framework will ensure of going through the record based on the new line. We don't have to worry about it. It's the responsibility of the framework for doing that, Swapnil. Cool. <clears throat> Papal was asking, in case of unstructured data, how is the splitting done? <clears throat> in case of unstructured data also, like a log or like a blog, you will have to decide the splitting logic. In the case of a log, it could still be one line, but then since it is uh, semi-structured, you will have to use regular expressions to get what you want from the log. Okay, in case of audio video images, one file will be one record. So you have to identify the splitting logic properly. Cool? Fantastic. Srikanth has said, uh, uh, it is just like a typical word count example using a hash map, right? Very much. Okay, so that's a very good analogy. Then uh, Ravi was saying, why car in the second is not showing car 2? Why should it show car 2, Ravi? Because you are going through every word and suffixing one to it. You are not doing a business logic to see if there is already a key present and then I should add one to it. You are not doing that in the mapper, right? The mapper is going to be a code which will look at, split that words and then write one to it. That's all the mapper is doing. If you want to do some additional logic, then you'll have to build in the code. Fine? Cool, Ravi. <clears throat> Very good, Prapul. So, the first three columns are going to be done in your every mapper node where the data is. So, now tell me, where will the output of the mapper be stored? Yesterday, we did some configurations, right? In the mapred-site.xml, where do you think is the output of the mapper stored, folks? I'm acting like Annie now. Okay. No, no, no. The final output is what is stored in HDFS. The output of the mapper is not stored in HDFS. Yesterday we had a property called as local dot the right in mapred.xml, right? So in mapred.xml there was a location called as local dot there. It will always be stored in the local file system of the node, okay? It will be stored in the local directory. Wherever your location of local dot there, remember I told you two things yesterday, local dot there and system dot there system.directory and local.directory, wherever your local.directory, directory location is mentioned, the data will be stored over there, friends. Okay? Perfect. So now, once one of the mapper is finished, okay, there is something called as shuffling that is going to happen. So who is going to orchestrate the shuffling? It is going to be the master. So let me go ahead and explain that. Shuffling is going to be controlled by the master of map radios that is going to be the job tracker. Okay? So what will the job tracker do here is the movement it sees that one of the mapper is finished, okay, it will assign a separate a partition in which it will give it to a reducer slot. Okay, let me write it down. Okay, the job tracker will assign a separate partition. So how do I decide the partition? Okay, that means separate area. Okay, 
or separate collection you can say okay so we'll assign, assign a separate partition okay what is a partition how do i uh, select the partition default partition is the hash of the key okay it will assign a separate partition to the reducer to a reducer slot to a reducer uh, uh, slot okay what is a reducer slot a reducer i should say a reducer instead of a slot a reducer okay so now i am going to go ahead and copy this for you guys just one sec by mistake i did control s so let me do a copy paste and put this in the chat window okay <clears throat> so just one sec Okay, got an SMS, so I just uh, saw what the SMS is. That's the reason I got distracted. Uh, let me do a control V, and that is uh, sent to all. So let me look at this, guys. So whenever one mapper is finished, the shuffler will, that means the job tracker will start the shuffling process. So it will assign a DR. That means you look at the hash of the key and say one of the reducer slot you are responsible for this. So which is the reducer slot it's assigning? It's assigning dear to it. Okay, this is the first reducer slot. So what it has done over here is it has taken the key, okay, and it has given the value also to that particular reducer slot. Then beer beer comes down to another reducer slot river is another unique value that's why it will go down to the another reducer slot then when the second mapper finishes car is another unique slot so that's why it will go down to another uh, partition now car is already there that's why the second value will go down to the second partition river is already there that's why the second value will go down to the same partition which had the river the first river then same way for DR, CAR, and BR. So what happens over here is the shuffling process is going to be orchestrated by or controlled by the master of MapReduce, that is job tracker. So as and when the mappers finish, the job tracker will say that, okay, it will look at, if you don't say anything, it will look out for the default hash of the key and it will assign separate reducers to take care of the all the values for the key friend okay so this is what is going to happen hey shishobit was saying default partition is the hash of the key what is the hash hey shishobit and vasu hash is how it will calculate the ascii value of any key so hash is a mathematical algorithm and all the similar values will always have the same hash think of it like the ascii value and the addition of the ascii values okay so go down to google and search for how to calculate the hash of a key that will give you an idea how to calculate hash of a key okay so it will show you a mathematical logic of how to calculate hash there it is so this is what is a hash function okay so you will see over here the hash function is any function that can be used to map data of arbitrary sizes to data of fixed size okay so the values returned by the hash functions are called as hash codes in java there is something called as hash code and you will see that uh, both of your similar keys will always have the same hash okay so there are various ways in which you can do that since this is java it will look at the hash code friends okay make sense <clears throat> so sapnal was saying reducer will act on the list too yeah yeah sapnal let's wait let's finish the uh, shuffling phase and then we will look at the reducing phase funny was saying why beer is uh, uh, first in the order and not dear okay it depends upon how the hashing is done okay 
So typically when you do the hashing, it will always try to sort it. Okay, when you do the shuffling, it is always called as shuffle and sort. It will try to sort it individually. Okay, so good. <clears throat> so that is the reason. We haven't gone to the word reducer until now, friend. A reducer is another component. Remember, there is a map and a reduce. A mapper is going to be one guy who is going to do the mapping. Okay, and the reducer similarly is another guy who is going to do the reducing. Remember yesterday we have seen the number of max, map task and reduce task. Right, Ravi? Cool. So let me go back to my diagram. So this is what is the logic. So let me look at the questions window again. Good, Ravi. So others, are you clear with what is the mapping phase? You write the business logic of uh, what you want to get from the record. You will get a list of keys and values. The shuffler, that is the job tracker, will then look out because where is the shuffling process going to run? The shuffler will run on all the map that is executed on all the nodes. Where was the mapper running? Mapper was running individually. It was running parallelly on all the nodes where the data was. As and when the data gets finished on any of the nodes, the shuffling will have to happen on all the nodes. So this is very, very, very important, guys. So the shuffling process is going to go through all the nodes. And once the shuffling is finished, what will it guarantee is it will give you unique sorted list of keys and all the values for the key will be given together. Okay? <clears throat> Shishobit internally it will do different things. It will use some kind of collection. So it is going to use some kind of collection. So what will be the guarantee of the after the shuffler is finished? All the keys or I mean all the values of a similar key are given to one reducer. Okay, and then the reducer will start working. So I just want to check if you are clear with the mapping and the shuffling phase, all of you. I would need communication right now, guys. If something is not clear, let's bring it up right now. <clears throat> so Sapnal was saying, so actually, splitting, mapping, shuffling, all done physically on data nodes. Exactly. The data nodes are the place where all of these things are going to be executed. Folks, I hope it is clear for all others who are very, very quiet today. Okay. Tanmoy is not there for some reason today. Sapna, <clears throat> you were there yesterday, friend. So I don't recollect, friend. So please, uh, please ensure that you are all clear on this. Very good, Krishna. Thank you. Exactly, Srikant. Okay, Tanmay is not there. So, they, okay, you guys are together. Okay, so that's fine. So, shuffling is done centrally. That's correct. So, Swami said, so beer, car, dear, has to be in, in alphabetical order from top to down. That is what the shuffling phase will ensure. It will be sorting and shuffling. Okay. So Abnikant was saying, can you write it down, the mapping and the shuffling phase on the notepad? Okay, I'll do that. Yes, funny, shuffling is done across the nodes. Only when it is done across the nodes, then you will get this, because a similar key will be there on multiple nodes, right? So that's the way how it will work. Propel is saying, do a node can accommodate many mappers and reducers at a, at a point of time? Yes, you can do that. Remember yesterday we had max, map task and reduce task. We had two, right? Propel, we had it yesterday, right? Good, good. So if you look at the reducer, so what is happening? There's no need, Abnikan, to write it down. It's over here. It will look at the key of every, it will look at the output of every mapper and then sort it and then start assigning it to different reducers. So once the shuffling is done across all the multiple machines, okay, you will get a key and a list of values, Abnikan. Are you clear on this? What did you want me to write it on the notepad, friend? <clears throat> Was not very clear on what you want me to do, friend? Because the diagram is very clear. Where is the shuffling done? What memory does it use? The shuffling is controlled by the job tracker, but is actually done by the task trackers. Okay? So the memory of the task tracker is used over here, funny. 
श्योर श्योर अब निकांत ओके सो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द मैक्स मैप वी अलाउ द सेम डेटा सेट विल बी एग्जीक्यूटिंग डिफरेंट लॉजिक मैपलिंग एंड शफलिंग कैन बी डन हे फर्स्ट मैपिंग नीड्स टू बी फिनिश्ड ऑन ए रिकॉर्ड then the job tracker will have the data node uh, do the shuffling part of it that means see there is cross cross movement of key values here right so all those movement of key values is controlled by the job tracker by the master right good funny was saying when there are individual job trackers and task trackers for each node then which job tracker task tracker memory is used hey wherever the okay where will the mapping happen funny on the nodes wherever data is right so let's assume i have got 10 node cluster i have got 100 mb file so how many nodes will have the data two nodes so where will the mapper run only on the nodes where the data is right funny but where can the reducers be running let me get the answer i have got 10 nodes 64 and 36 is on two nodes so mappers will run only on two nodes where can the reducers be executed on two nodes or on 10 nodes why two nodes guys why do you think it's going to be only on two nodes it will be 10 nodes that's right shrikant it will be 10 why 10 because you see over here there are three mappers but how many reducers are there right there are four reducers right so don't you see there are four separate reducers so each of the reducers can be done by separate nodes right so it's a shuffler which will decide uh, all the resource management so who is going to do the shuffling work depending upon which reducer is going to do the shuffling work on which node depending upon the resource utilization at that point of time mapping is always done on the node where the data is data locality right but now there are three mappers okay but then there are four reducers right we can see it on the same screen so that's why reduce can be done on any node in the cluster so people typically think hey there will be a network choke up because of the data movement no it's all done uh, not at the same time so when one mapper finishes imagine i have i'm a courier company and i have got 10 people who are going to get me couriers and i typically give the courier to four states delhi mumbai calcutta and chennai okay so do i have to wait for all the 10 courier guys to come and then do the arrangement no whenever one courier guy comes i can do the arrangement right so the shuffling starts immediately when one mapper output is finished okay but then the final summation of all the envelopes for mumbai delhi calcutta and chennai will be done only when all the 10 guys have come in right so the shuffling work starts when the actual uh, uh, one mapper have finished friends cool cool on this guys understood this what is reducing and shuffling so funny said so it means shuffling and reducing can be done on any node no need to happen only on the nodes where the data is residing exactly uh, funny that is exactly correct okay very good Swapnil said, I mean same record data set can be processed at the same time with two different logic, <coughs> that is uh, splitting and mapping. Hey, splitting has mapping. Before mapping, you should have splitting, right? So, uh, because there is no lock needed over here, because it's right ones read many times, you can have multiple analysis working on the same data set. You can think in that way. But before mapping, I need shuffling, uh, splitting to be done, right? good so Vasu was saying number of mapper machines is equal to number of reducer machines no 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 Vasu because number of mapper is dependent upon the size of the data so if your size of the data is uh, uh, let's say 100 MB you will have it on two mappers will be running on two machines the number of reducers will be dependent on the number of unique hash uh, of the keys right look at the screen you have got four reducers whereas you have got three mappers right Vasudev clear on that 
exactly red users would be dependent upon the data content that's right how many red users needs to work on it is going to be dependent upon the data content very true make sense good good so <clears throat> Uh, Prapul was saying, I expect that there will be a lot of data exchange and comparisons at the time of shuffling for a big file. Why do you think there will be a lot of data exchange? Yes, there will be data exchange, but is all the data exchange going to happen at the same time? No, right? Because if you have got 1 million lines, okay, will all the 1 million lines be processed parallelly? No, it will be processed based on the number of mapper slots what I'm having. Imagine you are a BPO company and you have got uh, 10 employees. How many calls can the 10 employees take at one point of time properly? I have got 10 employees. Okay. How many calls can it be taken at one point of time? 10. But does that mean in a day I can take only 10 calls? No, right? Right, Navdeep? Right, Sapnal? I can take multiple calls, right? Getting an idea of it? So the moment one of the calls finishes, he can pick up another call. These are all small records which can be analyzed real, real quick. Good. So Ravi was saying if you want to split based on the letter instead of the word, we will have more red users. Is that correct? Exactly. But you'll have maximum 26 red users depending upon the number of unique words. You won't have more than that, right? So imagine in, if you want to do a word, let word count of how many words are used in the in a, in a Shakespeare's uh, novel, okay, maximum number of reducers will only be 26. Number of unique words, right Ravi, yes? Make sense? Good. Hey guys, why am I giving you these examples is because I want it to be clear, friend. Okay, don't take it in a wrong way. I am giving you this multiple examples so that I want you to be clear. There should be no doubt that is going to be there in your mind. Nobody should be able to confuse you after taking my class saying that, okay, what is map reduced? They should be able to shake you. Good. So let's carry on, friends. So now, after the shuffling, okay, you know the number of unique keys that is there, right? Hey, before I go ahead, uh, Sapnal uh, Abnikant was saying, uh, right now we know there are three records. One record has four words and other has got three. How many maps will be used? Three or four. Okay, Abnikant, the number of maps that will be used is the number of records. Okay, so if you have got three records and one records, Okay, so the number of maps runs will be dependent upon the number of records. It has got nothing to do with words. In the mapper is what you are converting a record to a word, right? Make sense, Abnikant? Good, good. So if you have got three records, you will have three maps. You write the logic of it, then the shuffler will ensure that all the unique, uh, all the values of the unique key will go down to one red user. And then it will do the reducing part of it. Simple. Fantastic. So after the shuffler, you will get something called as your key and a list of values. Okay. And then you will have the reducer. And then you write your reducing logic. In this example, you want to do a sum. In the transaction example, you want to do a sum. In the temperature example, you want to do a max. So the reducing always does some kind of aggregation and then the final data is what is stored in your final result. So this is what is the overall map reduce word count process. Okay. So hope it is very clear for you as to how we can do an end-to-end -end process for the map reduce. So these are the six columns. Input is the data, one block. Splitting decides how to identify a record. In the mapper, you write the business logic of what you want to pick up from the record. Shuffling ensures that all the values for a similar key across multiple data nodes, wherever the data is written, is all given to one reducer. So the default partitioning is based on the key, or sorry, on the hash of the key. Okay. Supposing if you want to say that all alphabets, all keys starting with A, B, C should be one and greater than C should be another. Okay, so you will have beer and car going to one and then in this example, deer and rover that is greater than uh, B, A, B, C going down to the second. So you decide what is your partitioning logic. 
depending upon that it will go down to the reducer the reducer will do some aggregation and the final output is what is going to be stored in HDFS exactly so if you say a b c should be in one and greater than c should be in another there will be two reducers exactly that's right that's right Swapnal okay so fantastic guys a couple of slides and then I will stop and then I will give you a demo so that at least you can see how to start with things so what I need to do right now is I need to real quickly start with my VM player because I need to give you a complete demo of this before of course uh, there is a, a video recording okay so you can look at that uh, map reduce program video recording also so that will also give you a very good idea but then I thought that I'll show you the complete run of it so that you will get a hang of it so let me go ahead and say play the VM while the VM is going to be played let me minimize it let me start with my Eclipse and let the Eclipse come up so in the meantime I'm going to go down to my next slide so what are we doing over here in the next slide is going to be we are going to talk about the anatomy of the map radius what we have just discussed right now so everything is going to be a key value the input to the mapper is going to be a key and a value what is going to be the key the input to the mapper here guys what will be the key as input to the mapper what will be K1 here guys was the answer what will be K1 very good cursor position or offset point the value will be the whole record very good Ravi very good Krishna okay good good so then <coughs> the mapper will ensure that uh, you will do the business logic and return a list of keys and values very good Shishobeth right uh, Srikanth right Soumya sorry uh, right uh, Sami and then uh, the shuffler will ensure that those list of keys and values are shuffled so that you will get a key and a list of values and then in the reduce you write the business logic and you will get the key list of keys and values so this is the complete anatomy of a map reduce process so if you're going to do the map reduce on the example that we did earlier just one sec I just wanted to start with my Edureka workspace there we go okay so now if you want to do the map reduce way <coughs> like what we had seen in a traditional way so the framework ensures that that very big data is broken into multiple blocks okay in a block you identify a record and the map converts that record based on a partition function it is given to a reducer and finally the result is what is stored in HDFS okay good funny was saying if I have got 10,000 record does it generate 10,000 mappings uh, funny let me put this question to you back again if you have got 10,000 records in a table and when you say select star from table name where column number is equal to so and so does it have to go through all the 10,000 records funny in RDBMS yes so over here also yes it has to go through friend there's no shortcut but do you think there are going to be 10,000 mappers remember my example of 10 BPO persons and, and 100 calls in a day right funny so parallelly I can do maximum 10 but then I cannot do more than that funny hope it makes sense friend so please ask questions I want it to be crystal clear for you so this is what is the map reduce way of your processing your big data